Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Attorney General's Chambers is bolstering the capacity of staff. The agriculture sector is showing expanded growth. The Parliament of St. Lucia ensures a smoother process for child adoption. All that was the latest in youth development and sports. The Attorney General's Chambers is bolstering the capacity of staff. On Monday, 17th June, a workshop on the management of vulnerable witnesses in the criminal justice process was held at the Finance Administration Building. Here's Janelle Norville with the details. Members of the judicial system are undergoing a three-day national capacity building program for justice officials on the handling of vulnerable witnesses in criminal process, money laundering and assets recovery with reference to civil forfeiture and international cooperation in criminal matters in St. Lucia. Justice practitioners must constantly be brought up to date with practical approaches and skills necessary to combat crime and ensure quick and efficient dispensation of justice. The ultimate objective is to enhance the capacity of relevant persons and agencies who are directly involved in the various aspects in combating crime. The emergence of new technologies has created vulnerabilities within the financial sector, which can facilitate the commission of transnational crime, including money laundering and terror, terrorism financing. It is observed that these developments have created a possible platform for criminals to operate a cyber network of, of, of organized crime. The need to be able to obtain information and evidence from these platforms in a timely matter, manner sorry, is critical to, for law enforcement. According to Commonwealth Secretariat's legal advisor, Elizabeth Bakibinga Gaswaga, the program is also designed to assist individuals engaged in combating domestic and transnational crimes to gain a foundation and understanding the issues involved with asset forfeiture. It is anticipated that in sharing national practice and experiences from other parts of the Commonwealth, we shall leave this program with more practical approaches and skills necessary to combat crime and ensure quick and efficient dispensation of justice. We very much hope that each of you seizes the opportunity to network and build closer relationships, leaving this meeting not only having enriched your knowledge, but as importantly, forged working relationships and friendships, which will continue into the future. Upon completion of the training program, it is expected that participants will understand the theoretical basis and practical approaches in handling vulnerable witnesses in criminal justice trials, the national coordination and cooperation required for the investigation of money laundering, recovery of proceeds of crime, and effective national coordination in cross-border cooperation through mutual legal assistance in criminal matters and extradition. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Meantime, the AG's Chambers launched its website alongside its annual report. Lisa Joseph has that story. The Attorney General's Chambers is tasked with the mandate of delivering to the Government of St. Lucia quality legal service with integrity and professionalism in a timely fashion. Other units of the AG's Chambers are responsible for focusing primarily in facilitating an enabling environment creating value and effective advice through the Registry of Companies and Intellectual Property, the Legislative Drafting Unit, and the Advice and Litigation Department. During its second annual staff meeting, the Chambers launched its website and released an annual report for the years 2013 to 2018. The thrust, according to Permanent Secretary in the AG's Chambers, Juliana Alfred, is to increase the visibility of the unit and the work it continues to do. Um, the overall objective of these two major activities is, of course, to increase our visibility with our stakeholders and to ensure that AG's Chambers remains accountable, accountable to the public, accountable to ourselves in, in terms of letting people know what is going on. Attorney General expressed his gratitude for the cooperation of staff. He indicated that the powers that be recognized the importance of the chambers and have been very forthcoming in ensuring that the relevant resources are made available. This is our way of accounting for what is done, um, some level of transparency of our, our works, um, and to let people understand that we 
we are dedicated to what we're doing. We have a role to play in the development of, of the rule of law and the protection of the rule of law, uh, the protection of our banking systems. The, the work that you have been doing over this period of time has been phenomenal. I have said it before, you have earned my respect and I will continue to advocate for the allocation of resources. Friday saw the release of the annual report 2013 to 2018 and the launch of the website attorneygeneralchambers.com. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The agriculture sector is showing expanded growth and the review of the output of most subsectors show high levels of production. This formed part of a report to Parliament on Tuesday by the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, who noted that notwithstanding the negative impact of climate change, St. Lucia still recorded 5.8% growth of banana sales to the UK market and also experienced growth of 7.6% in revenue for 2018. The undisputed fact, Mr. Speaker, is that banana exports in 2018, despite all the negative impact of climate change, has been the highest in five years. That's an undisputed fact. Mr. Speaker, the government understands and appreciating the socio-economic impact of a well-coordinated agricultural program on our rural communities has decided to undertake a focused approach in the implementation of our many agricultural programs. The Banana Product Production Improvement Project, BPIP, with the financial and technical assistance from the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, is one such program, Mr. Speaker. Since the establishment following the trop tropical storm Matthew in September 2016, we have experienced, and that's the fact, we have experienced, we have grown from 1,117 acres to 2,669 acres of banana cultivation. We have moved from 230 farmers to 643 farmers operating 764 farms, Mr. Speaker. The minister noted that there are presently over 290 farmers wanting to be Euro GAP certified. This certification, Mr. Speaker, is necessary to allow these farmers to sell fair trade bananas on the UK market. Presently, Mr. Speaker, we have a system that only allows for 10% of your certified farmers to be certified for a year, which means if we allow that system to continue, it will take us over eight years to have all these farmers certified. So we are looking at ways and means, Mr. Speaker, to see how we can get all these farmers certified so they can sell the bananas on the UK market. The minister added that with the positive impact of the Banana Production Improvement Program, the stakeholders are projecting a weekly export production of 17,000 boxes, barring any negative impact of climate change. Solutions were encouraged to donate blood and save a life as they joined the world in celebrating World Blood Donor Day. More from Finel Neptune. As part of celebrating World Blood Donor Day on June 14th, the Blood Bank of the Victoria Hospital held a blood drive in the William Peter Bull van. World Blood Donor Day was celebrated under the theme, Safe Blood for All. Medical Laboratory Assistant of the Blood Bank, Renata St. Helen, highlighted the objective of the World Blood Donor Day campaign for this year. The objectives for this year's campaign is to raise awareness for the universal need of safe blood in the delivery of health care. Also, it is to highlight and encourage committed year-round blood donations. Also, we want to encourage persons who have never donated to do so. And lastly, it is to mobilize support at a national, regional and global level among the governments to strengthen and build a sustainable blood program. Renata St. Helen also spoke on the importance of donating blood. 
It is important for solutions to donate blood because we've noticed that there is an increase in the demand for blood. This is due to the fact that there is an increase in casualties such as stabbings, shootings and road accidents. St. Lucians are reminded to donate blood as one pint of blood can save three lives. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, has urged sports administrators here to continue working for the country by putting themselves in the shoes of athletes and work on their behalf. Minister Estefan made the remarks while speaking during the dedication of the conference room at the headquarters of the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated in honor of late honorary member Jonathan Everett. Minister Estefan also recommended to the administrators that they take a close look at their respective structures to bring improved services to athletes. He urged them to make changes wherever necessary and to ensure those changes yield positive results. Over the last weekend, we brought you some summarized scores on the final of the school's under-15 40 overs cricket competition, which Leon has Comprehensive won by 53 runs. Scores Leon has Comprehensive 133 in 31.2 overs. St. Mary's College 80 all out in 21 overs. Here are some of the highlights of the final.
And if those highlights from the recently concluded inter-schools under 15 40 overs cricket competition, we have come to the end of our update from youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Child Care Protection and Adoption Act No. 8 of 2018 replaced the Adoption Act Cap 4.07. Under the repealed act, an adoption order was processed through the High Court. When the act came into force in 2018, an adoption order would have been dealt with primarily by an adoption committee. However, this committee has yet to be established. On the 11th of June 2019, the Child Care Protection and Adoption Amendment Act was tabled in Parliament, providing a new process for dealing with an application order. The Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment Honorable Leonard Montoud says that by doing so, people would have an alternative avenue to continue processing applications for an adoption order made under the repealed Act. Although the Act requires the establishment of an adoption committee and a director of human services for full implementation, this has not been the case. Currently, the post for a director of human services remains vacant and the adoption committee has not been established. Only recently, Mr. Speaker, we appointed an acting director of human services. And like I indicated, we have not as yet established an adoption committee. Mr. Speaker, this state of affairs has led to uncertainty in relation to the processing of new applications for an adoption on the act, under the act. Members of the legal fraternity and the public in general are left in doubt not knowing how to continue and proceed with an application for an adoption order. Therefore, to assist with administering the Act, it is recommended that the Act be amended to introduce a separate division that contains the provisions of the repealed Act in relation to an adoption order by the High Court. The High Court may make an order authorizing someone who is a citizen of St. Lucia or has resided in St. Lucia for at least six consecutive months prior to the date of application to adopt an infant. And do stay with the NTN nightly. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça au ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagaille sale à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou ka tuer panne. Si toilette bol ou ka coller, ou ni pour mettre ten en dit de bac là. Toilette bol là, ka couler si ou ka wè couler à dans bol là avant ou flush li. Un toilette bol qui ka couler, ka gaspiller un chai glo. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver motoka. Lè ou ka laver had, servi de l'eau ouais c'est pour user fleur. Lè ou sauver de l'eau, ou ka baisser manière, ou ka servi tepe en main. Sauver de l'eau toutes les ou ni en chance. Et changer tout de l'eau est content. Ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. The bill to ban the importation, manufacturing, sale, use and distribution of styrofoam and plastic food service containers has been passed. The styrofoam and plastic food service containers prohibition bill, which was passed in Parliament on Tuesday, June 11, seeks to provide new legislation to ban such materials. While these products have the advantages which include being heat resistant and cost effective, they are not biodegradable and persist in the environment after disposal. The negative environmental impacts of styrofoam and plastic food service containers has led to the adoption of various measures to eliminate its use. Table in the bill in Parliament was the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Edmund Estefan, who says that this bill encourages the use of acceptable alternatives. A phased approach is used to eliminate the use of styrofoam and plastic food service containers in the bill. 
Essentially, the bill prevents the importation of styrofoam disposable plates, disposable trays, disposable hinges, hinge takeaways, containers, disposable bowls, and plastic disposable cups, disposable plates, disposable beverage cup lids, and disposable bowl lids from the 1st of August 2019. And the importation of plastic disposable forks, disposable spoons, disposable knives, disposable straws, disposable hand takeaway containers, disposable plates, disposable trays, disposable stirrers, and styrofoam disposable egg cartoons must stop from 1st August 2020 in phase one. The Honorable Prime Minister Alan Shastney says the environmental impact of styrofoam and plastic food service containers have for too long been understated and misunderstood. And the fact is, is that they're readily um, available substitutes. You take, for instance, a plastic straw, easily can be substituted with a, a paper straw. Um, and getting into the habit of like how we go to the grocery store with our own bag, that we now start going to places with our own container to be able to get a cup of coffee, to be able to get water, and so that we're not continuously disposing the product that we've had. Um, we have to take our environment very seriously. And while we're not going to be able to solve the problem by ourselves, but I am extremely encouraged by the movement that's taking place throughout the length and breadth of the world. It is expected that by 1 August 2021, the styrofoam and plastic food service containers would have been eradicated in St. Lucia. Measures to ensure that the bill is enforced are also included in the bill. The different needs and daily requirements of patients of the Victoria Hospital is expected to be met as a donation of wheelchairs was received recently. More from Fennel Neptune. The management of Victoria Hospital was recently presented with a donation of wheelchairs thanks to the generosity of the MNC Drugstore. The wheelchairs are expected to assist with transporting patients around the hospital. Medical Director of the Victoria Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugen, says her organization is very pleased with the timely donation and believes it will play a significant part in the public health system. These wheelchairs, the donation is needed. It's timely and it's appropriate. And as you know, if you look at the, the topography of this present structure, we need the wheelchairs to move patients from departments to another and also up and down the hill. So the wear and tear on the wheelchairs, it's something that happens regularly and we always need more wheelchairs to allow us to move patients as the patient load increases. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, express gratitude to the MNC drugstore and says this donation will provide great assistance in the health sector. We really appreciate this effort that you have made to keep us in your, 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 uh, you know, in your thoughts when you were looking at allocating the, these requests and gifts to, to the different sectors of our society. As you know, this is very far-reaching in that sometimes we actually have people who are living here who need a wheelchair to go with. So I am hoping that this will also, we will also be able to do this at least with, you know, a few of the wheelchairs. General Manager of MNC Drugstore, Frederica Joseph Leon, says her organization is very pleased that they can contribute to part of St. Lucia's health needs. Of late, there has been an, a noticeable increase in letters for health aid. And so when the opportunity arose to collaborate with a business partner of ours to actually get 19 wheelchairs, <laughs> 15, to St. Lucia, my heart soared. I was so happy. One can only imagine the logistics involved in getting those wheelchairs to the person most in need. And so after consultation with my team, I decided the people who could best handle this would be the people at Victoria Hospital. A total of 19 wheelchairs were donated to the Victoria Hospital. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline remains unchanged at $13.95 per gallon. 
Kerosene increased from $8.51 to $8.76 per gallon. Diesel decreased from $13.95 to $13.81 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder decreased from $32.38 to $32.23. The 22-pound cylinder decreased from $35.90 to $35.73. And the 100-pound cylinder decreased from $205 and 75 cents to 204 dollars and 95 cents the next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on monday july 8 2019 and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise a tropical wave over the lesser antilles is expected to produce cloudiness and scattered showers across the southern eastern caribbean region during the next forecast period Two other tropical waves located over the central and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 4.42 p.m. and will be low again at 9.07 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was low at 11.28 a.m. and will be high again at 10.34 p.m. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.36 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.